belly disaster too. My business partner has left me, but won't give back his shares. This one's happened quite a few times. Imagine you start out in a business. You've known somebody for 10 years, say, done a bit of work together. You're in the pub one day. Yeah, let's start a business. You do all the technical businessy stuff, and I'll do all the sales and admin stuff. We're a great team. So the guy comes in and sees me and says, I can't understand what's happened. I've known him for 10 years. You know, our families know each other. We've even been on holiday. I thought I could get on with him, but it hasn't worked out. I just don't know what's happened. He's left. He's gone to work for somebody else or set up another business. What's more, he says he wants the £20,000 back that he put in at the beginning. That's, that's not possible. The business isn't doing well enough. We've only just been going for a, a few months. How can he have the £20,000 back? He says the business is worth a quarter of a million pounds. It's nonsense. It's not. What's more, he wants to keep his shares. So he's saying, I'm going to keep my shares until you give me my 20 grand back. The business is paralysed. Everybody's unhappy. So what to do? Because it's a common enough scenario. People often start in business as friends, collaborators, and so on. But unfortunately, sadly, like marriages, they often go bad, and you've got to find a way of untangling it. Here's some other permutations, of course. You might want to sell the business. Let's say you've got on well for two or three years, and you're actually doing well. One of you wants to sell, the other doesn't. What to do? Your best mate dies. And all of a sudden, you've got the spouse wanting to turn up to board meetings or shareholder meetings. What could be worse than that? You simply disagree about what you're going to do. One of the big issues with shares is valuing them. And as in my little anecdote, one person thinking the business is worth a quarter of a million and another person thinks it's not, how are you going to untangle that? And there should be financial statements. Yeah, financial which statements. Are, which gives you an indication of the value of the, of the company. Yeah, but you can set it up earlier by putting it in the shareholders' agreement. You can create a framework because you're right. It's, um, as you know, it's not a science, is it? There may, there'll be differing views, but you know, you can use price to earning multiples, you can use turnover formula, and all sorts of formulas. And one accountant will put in one valuation based on one scenario, the, the other guys will put in another valuation by another, and you know what it's like, you know. It's money for accountants and lawyers. Okay, well, I'm assuming we're talking about companies. Some of you may have companies, some of you may not have companies. I would recommend that you do have companies because limited liability is pretty critical, I think, in this business world. Do you know what, lim everyone happy with limited liability? Yeah. yeah. So have a company. You've got a company, you're talking about shares. If you're talking about business partners, you're talking about shareholders. You've got shares, they've got shares. So you need to... What is the difference between LLP and limited? Well, an, an LLP is a limited liability partnership. It's often used by solicitors, such as us. We're an LLP. It's a, it's, um, it was designed um, to satisfy a lot of pressure from accountants, I think, originally, who wanted limited liability but wanted to carry on being partnerships. Uh, does it have to be only uh, for the solicitors? Or no, no, it can be other people. It can be trading businesses tend not to use them. Um, but um, they are used, they're used in property development, they're used in joint ventures. The benefit of an LLP is that they're fairly tax neutral, so the, the profits that are made by the LLP funnel straight up to the, the, uh, the partners, the members of the LLP. And so if in a joint venture example particularly, um, the two jo joint venture partner partners may have completely different circumstances and they may want the profits to flow through to the, the top. Whereas the company, of course, has got corporation tax. So if it's a limited company, separate legal entity, it'll pay its own corporation tax. We'll come on to equity and debt later, because that's an interesting one. Um, yeah, so you need a shareholders' agreement. A shareholders' agreement can cover anything you want it to cover. It can cover, um, in the context of my story, what happens when somebody leaves. Now, in a startup business, you, uh, you tend to assume that everybody's working in it. 
there aren't really any armchair people in a startup because you need everybody to man the pumps. I'm, I'm slightly caveating that because, of course, you may have an investor who is, who is only ever going to be an armchair investor, who's somebody you know who's got some money in it, uh, uh, a business angel, and they may not be. But let's assume for the purpose of the, of the discussion that you're all in it together. So clearly, if this business partner of yours leaves, they're not contributing anymore. So why should they get any benefits? But they will if they've got shares. So you have to have a way of getting the shares back. The shareholder agreement can provide that the shares come back when the guy leaves. Simple as that. And this is where you get into the valuation, because you can provide the, the value of the shares is just par, which is the face value of the share. So one pound share, one pound gets one pound back. 100 shares get 100 pounds. So there's no, there's no goodwill associated with those shares. And you can provide for that in the shareholders agreement. And I think that's fair. When, you, when you're starting out at the beginning, you're having a discussion, you would probably all agree that if one of you left, then you ought to give your shares back. But you need to put it in the shareholders agreement, because it's not automatic. Shares are a piece of property. You own it. Once you've got your share, it's yours. It's solid, it's perpetual, and you can only sell it, transfer it, or have it taken away by a shareholders agreement. So cover it. Service and employment agreements are similar sorts of things. Um, this gets a little bit more complicated. You, you may have um, enough business to actually employ and pay people, and you may have salaried staff uh, who also have shares, and you can tie the two together. So you're making a link between the service and employment agreement and their obligations as shareholders. So leaving as an employee can trigger the transfer of the share. Life cover is important. I mentioned one of the deadly disasters is your business partner dying. As your business develops, I'm not saying you need to do all of this now, but later on you need to think about life cover. Because if your business is worth £250,000, or let's say it's worth £2 million, that p those other person's shares arguably are worth a million if it's 50-50, right? So if he dies, his estate is going to want the million pounds. Um, if you don't provide for it, it's very difficult to deal with that. Um, but you can. You can plan and have life cover on the value of shares. So that if you have cross, it's what called cross options, again, it gets quite complicated when you get into it. But in essence, the life cover will produce a pot of money that can be used to take the shares back, pay the deceased estate, off they go into the sunset, you've got control of your company. And it hasn't cost you anything, other than the premiums, of course. So do the survivors have the right not to sell? No, they, they do, if, unless you sort it out. But in the shareholders' agreement, it will provide that you can call for them. You can call the shares, or they can put them. Because the other side of the coin is the, the grieving family might want the money, well, obviously. They, they, they so they it's a put and call. Yes, but the thing is, just, if, I mean, for the sake of argument, uh, the, the, the person, the, the partner dies, you know, suddenly, sudden death, didn't have anybody call uh, will. So, um, in a manner of speaking, it may go to these the nearest survivors. Yes, that's right. So the nearest survivors, how much right do they have on owning or holding onto the shares in the company? The share is a piece of property; it will pass through their estate. If it if so it's um, without a will, it'll go as an, as um, through the intestacy rules. And yeah, you're right. It, whoever is next in line will get the shares. But what I'm yeah. Advocating here is that associated with the life cover is a put and call option, to a kind of shareholders agreement to provide that you can call for the shares, or indeed they can put them if you if you're a bit lazy about it. So complicated no, sorry. area. So, sorry about that. No, no sorry. it's a good. It was a good. It was a very good this question. The reason oh, the thing is, is I've seen a partnership falling apart. Recently, yeah. Yeah. And it's an engineering high tech firm, and I actually told the guy two years after he started to dissolve the company. Mm -hmm. But he was adamant to hold on to it. Six years has passed by. It is not the product that they are manufacturing. No, it is the personality conflict between the partners. So it is going to... And one of the things which I did discuss with him, do you have sudden death coverage? Yep. Which means either the party uh, partners, you know, dies or becomes disabled for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. How are you going to be mm -hmm. covered? So that's what I was asking. Yeah, no, it's a good question and you can cover it. So where do we go next? Sorry, I perhaps I ought to just go back a second because I don't want to 
you know, this is a whole topic on itself. There are some other events there as well. You can also cover those in the shareholders' agreement. You can do, do have voting and um, ways of determining disagreements and so on. You can pretty much cover anything, okay? Mm -hmm.